Uh, thank you again, Bob, for joining us and uh, for this discussion. Um, you've had the opportunity to go to North Korea, um, as I have a couple of times, um, and I wonder, before we get to talking about exactly what's happening as we speak uh, in Singapore, um, in the context of these discussions, could you help us peer behind the curtain a little bit about what did you see in North Korea, what is it like when you visit there, so we have a better sense about daily life in the country? Uh, I was in North Korea on, on two occasions. The first time uh, was in January of 2005. Peter was there with me, so he kept me out of trouble. Uh, the second time I was there was when I was negotiating with the North Koreans on the uh, possibility of U.S. humanitarian assistance. Uh, this was in May of 2011. Uh, several things struck me about North Korea. Uh, if you've been to South Korea, you know what kind of place South Korea is. It is a vibrant, very much uh, in the modern world. This is a country that has 1.3 cell phones per person. Uh, the South Korean economy is, uh, you know, probably 12th or 14th in terms of economy, economic size uh, in the world. It's a first world country. The uh, former Secretary General of the United Nations, the former South Korean Foreign Minister. North Korea is a very different kind of place. Same cultural, ethnic, uh, genetic inheritance, but a very different kind of country. North Korea is half the size of South Korea, 25 million people as opposed to 50 million people. Its economy is the size of a medium-sized sub-Saharan African country. Uh, the difference in terms of the economy, South Korean economy is 40 times the size of the North Korean economy. Uh, in per capita terms, 20, 22 times per capita income in South Korea as in North Korea. These are two countries that consider themselves brothers, and yet they're in a very different situation. When we were in North Korea, the one incident that I think gives you some flavor of what life in North Korea is like, uh, we held so we were there, uh, Peter and I were there uh, with Congressman Tom Lantos. And we were, he was there because he was trying to convince the North Koreans to re-enter talks with the United States and the other uh, countries that were involved in uh, six-party talk negotiations. And uh, as we were having conversations in the foreign ministry, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, we're sitting there, we're facing each other across the table, uh, having a conversation, it's going very well. And all of a sudden, the power goes out. This is January. This is North Korea. It's cold. The North Koreans say absolutely nothing. They continue talking as if nothing is happening. <laughs> and they continue. 15 minutes later, you could barely see the people on the other side of the table, and people were putting on their coats. Uh, we continued for another 10, 15 minutes, and finally the power came back on. Not a word. <laughs> Nobody said anything. This is what North Korea is like. Uh, it is a place where the economy does not function that well. Uh, it is a place where if you're in the elite, you do very well, thank you. And if you're not in the elite, you're in a situation where you have difficulty making ends meet, where you don't have enough food, uh, where you're scrimping and saving and trying to find ways to, to deal with everyday needs. So it's, it's a very different kind of, of situation in terms of, of North Korea. Well, and you, 